I have wanted to make today's video for a very long time. A video in which I talk about old favorites and how I suspect that the person that I am today would either loathe these books or would at the very least not have time for them anymore. And I think that that's a very interesting topic. It's interesting to measure how much you've changed and how much you've learned by way of looking at old favorites and re-examining your feelings about them. But I've also been on the fence about making this video because I felt that it would only really make sense to make this video if I then follow it up with a reread of these books and report the result in a timely manner or even in the same video. But I, I kind of really, really don't want to reread these books. Except maybe for one, because it so happens that Roxy from the channel The Chaotic Bibliophile picked actually one of the books on my list for her casual book club for September. And I'm taking this as a sign to just make this video talk a little bit about the books then reread at least one of them in September and we will see what happens with the rest of them. Maybe I will reread them in a timely fashion, maybe I won't. We'll see. So I have picked five books or four novels and one series that I loved when I read them in my teenage years, but that I have suspected for some time now that I would actually despise them if I reread them now. My first book is The English Patient by Michael Ondatje. I read this when I was 15 or 16 and I loved it. I, I was devastated by it. This is the story of four very different people who come together at the end of the Second World War when the Allied forces have closed down a hospital in Italy and these four people stay behind or seek refuge there. You may be familiar with the movie. The movie focuses on the story of the dying English patient himself, but in the book the four stories are more or less evenly balanced. And having loved this one, I read Michael Ondatje's latest novel, Warlight, as soon as it was released. Or I tried to read it, I should say. Warlight is the story of two English teenagers, brother and sister, who have their parents disappear on them shortly after the Second World War. And I think it later turns out that they were spies and they had to leave the country overnight and left their children in the care or have them watched over by a cast of shady characters of their acquaintance. But I never really got to these interesting parts of the story because I lost interest very soon and very hard when the author got hung up on telling the lengthy story of the boy's sexual initiation by a hot and willing co-worker whose name he doesn't even bother to ask until two weeks after they've had sex for the first time because boys will be boys. And after that, or in the middle of that, I just couldn't be bothered with a book anymore. And then the Canadian booktuber Emily Kate talked about another one of Michael Ondatje's novels in one of her wrap-ups. And she said that she was frustrated with it because there was so much penis in it. And that fits the picture that Warlight gave me so perfectly that I now wonder how much penis there actually may have been in The English Patient that I was just too young to pick up on and to get frustrated with back when I read it. Or not just how much penis, but more specifically how much old white maleness. And that is something that makes me put a book aside very quickly these days. 
And I think that the situation might be similar with my next book, which is Roxy's Book Club pick, which is The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera here in the German translation, The Unerträgliche Leichtigkeit des Seins. This is the story of one couple and a handful of their friends and lovers around the time of the Prague Spring and set for the most part in Prague. And what I remember from this book back when I read it, when I was 19, I think, the images that I still have in my memory from reading this book tell me that it is probably incredibly male gazy in the way that it puts so much emphasis on the exploration and examination of female sexuality, while at the same time, as far as I remember, the men are largely exempt from this very close examination of their sexuality and of their bodies and of their genitals. And I have suspected for a while now that reading this book nowadays would probably make me feel a little bit icky and uncomfortable. And the situation is again different but similar with my third book, which is Homo Faber by Max Frisch, a German book by a Swiss author. This is the story of an older middle-aged man who goes on a journey. Um, it starts out as a business trip and then becomes a trip for pleasure and ultimately one of self-discovery, self-actualization, because he meets a young woman who makes him see the world through different eyes. Um, he is, or he starts out as a very sober, rational mind and a very, a very rigid mind. And being with her teaches him a way of being in the world that is much warmer and makes him feel much more alive. I know, sounds absolutely awful, but it is actually not that bad, especially not for when the book was written in the 1950s, I think. So this was um, actually quite a new thing back then. And there is also an extremely dramatic sort of double twist towards the end, which puts everything in quite a different light. And yet still, if I read this today, I suspect that the character of the young woman would look to me like a very early version of the manic pixie dream girl. And that is an absolutely no go for me these days too. Book number four, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I loved, loved, loved this when I was a teenager and through my early 20s. And I loved it especially for its writing style and for its lengthy descriptions. And I have since watched a few YouTubers read this for the first time or reread it and complain about the awful writing style. And I do wonder how this writing style would sound and seem to me today. And I've also gotten quite impatient with my books and I like books that are tightly written and tightly plotted. And this is of course anything but tight. I am much impatient, for instance, today for most of these long and rambling classics and The Lord of the Rings is in its style and in its size comparable to, for instance, Charles Dickens. Then again, I'm reading Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson at the moment and I quite enjoy the writing in that one, the style that is. So who knows? And who knows, I may have simply enough nostalgia in me for the Lord of the Rings and for my Lord of the Rings fandom days that I will forever see it through rose-tinted glasses and will simply be unable to dislike it. Who knows? And book number five is the series that I mentioned. Of course, The Lord of the Rings is usually referred to as a trilogy, 
but it is really just one continuous story whereas the books in my book number five uh, in that series are much more distinct from one another and it is the Raythu series by uh, Storm Constantine. And the books in the first trilogy, the original trilogy, are called The Enchantments of Flesh and Spirit, The Bewitchments of Love and Hate, and The Fulfillments of Fate and Desire. Oh, quite shiny. So this is a post-apocalyptic paranormal fantasy adventure kind of romance trilogy the thing about this trilogy is that its treatment of women is kind of abominable women are basically done away with in the first few chapters and the result is a slash fic writer's wet dream and storm constantine the author tried to rectify that in her sequel trilogy but by that point, the damage was mostly done and it was too little too late and it was also kind of awkward by that point. And a second issue with the trilogy is that it is extremely tropey. Not so much when it comes to the plot lines, these are actually quite unique, but when it comes to the setting, the, the set decorations, so to speak, it's a goth trope fest and a punk trope fest. And when you are young, these are all exciting novelties. But when you are a little bit older and have seen them all a thousand times before, they seem actually quite embarrassing. When I read this trilogy when I was in my late teenage years, I loved it for its gothic feel for its punk feel and for its wildness and its savageness and I'm kind of really afraid of rereading this one and of ending up hating it because it would make me feel so much more divorced than I already feel from my younger self who could still get excited about things, whereas older me is so jaded and bored by everything. So these were five old favorites of mine that I'm kind of a little bit afraid of rereading now. If you have read any of them recently, I would love to know what you have to say about my suspicions about them. And I'd also like to know what books you think you might end up loathing if you read them now, but that you loved when you were younger. And please don't be cross with me if I end up not rereading any of these books for a very long time, except of course for The Unbearable Lightness of Being, which I will try my best to read for Roxy's Book Club in September, and I will report back to you with my thoughts and feelings about it at the end of the month. Bye!